Melanie didn't know what to do anymore. She paced back and forth, unable to calm herself down. The wedding dress even seemed to cause unbearable pain. It was heavy and awkward, but that wasn't the issue. Where was the groom? There were only 15 minutes left before the registration. Guests crowded around the registry office waiting. The bride had to keep her emotions in check, which was especially difficult. Melanie's friends were already exhausted, either from high heels or tedious waiting. They couldn't wait to start taking pictures and posting stories on Instagram. The photographers leading the ceremony were just as nervous as Melanie. They kept running up and asking if everything was all right. Time passed, and Adrian was still not there. Tension was in the air, and every minute, Vanessa and Nicholas's faces looked more and more puzzled. How is it possible to be late for your own wedding? The bride's mother was the first to speak, apparently tired of the tedious waiting. The passion subsided literally a few minutes later. An old Buick, the same age as Melanie, pulled up to the registry office. The guests stared in surprise at the young man who got out of the car. He was dressed in a simple trouser suit and held a bouquet of three chrysanthemums in his hands. Men and women emerged from the back seat. They seemed a little younger than Melanie's parents, and their attire would have caused even more questions. All of their clothes seemed to be from the previous century. Without any embarrassment, the company began to climb the stairs. Oh, what an interesting costume wedding, someone of Melanie's guests shouted. The young man laughed and handed the bewildered Melanie the bouquet of chrysanthemums. Hi, darling. Please excuse my late. The guests fell silent and watched with interest as the events unfolded. Adrian, what is this? Please explain, is this some kind of surprise? It seemed like Melanie was suffocating from her tight corset. My love, calm down. This is not a surprise. Unfortunately, or fortunately, this is the harsh truth of life. I just fell so in love with you that I couldn't tell you the whole truth right away. I'm not rich, my parents are simple workers, and I... I'm just a taxi driver who wants to become your beloved husband. Melanie's face flared up angrily. Adrian, how can you joke about me like that? Is this a hidden camera shoot? A test to see if I can marry a poor, unfortunate groom? Melanie, wait... Don't look for a catch. There are no cameras here. You just professed your love to me yesterday. Has your attitude towards me really changed so quickly? Stop kidding around, Adrian. What kind of circus have you created here? Did you decide to humiliate me completely? Well, thanks. You succeeded. How did I not realize you were a fraudster from the start? No circus here. Adrian's voice was now more serious. We were on a boat ride together. Remember, you told me you wanted to live with me for the rest of your life. And at the cafe, remember, I gave you an expensive watch as a gift. I bought all of that with my honestly earned money. I knew you wouldn't want a modest wedding, so I took a loan for this event. Melanie covered her face with her hands and cried silently. She couldn't imagine that the happiest day of her life would turn out to be the worst. The girl thought she had met a considerate, gentle and wealthy young man. After painting her cloudless future in bright colours, she even started to do worse in university, naively thinking that she wouldn't have to immediately start looking for a job after graduation, as her parents had constantly urged her to do. The financial situation of the future groom did not raise any questions either, stylishly dressed in an expensive car with a flat that was able to be built in the most prestigious area of the city. No, Melanie didn't think she had won the lucky ticket. All of this was natural to her. She was from well-to-do family and was pretty, so why not choose a partner to match? Adrian tried to embrace the bride, but Melanie pushed him away and said angrily, How could you? How could you embarrass me? in front of all my relatives on such a day. There will be no wedding. The girl turned her back on the guests and walked away. 
The stunned parents of the bride and groom silently looked at each other and didn't know what to do. One of the bride's friends secretly took out her phone and filmed everything that was happening. The guests froze as if petrified. It's not every day that you become a hero in such a dramatic situation. Melanie's father was the first to come out of shock. Daughter, come back. Everything is fine. Anything can happen between a bride and groom. But Melanie, no longer hiding her desperate state, burst into tears and ran down the sidewalk. Vanessa ran after her daughter. Nicholas sat on the steps of the registry office and lowered his head. Now all attention was focused on Adrian. He confidently handed the chrysanthemum bouquet to his parents and sat down next to Melanie's father. How will you explain all of this? asked Nicholas. He turned to Adrian and looked him straight in the eye. You, dear Nicholas, have worked diligently all your life, just like your wife. You gave your daughter the best, but only one thing was missing. Honesty and selflessness. What are you talking about? My daughter is an honest girl. You're the one who lied to her, took her to restaurants, drove her around in expensive cars. But why? If you couldn't afford it, why didn't you tell her yourself? I'm certain if she loved you, it would not have been a problem. You would have achieved everything together with time. Why didn't we see through you, swindler? Melanie's father looked at Adrian with hatred. No one doubts your daughter's honesty, but why did she run away when she found out about my situation? I'm not a drug addict, not a drunkard, not a criminal. I earn money through honest work. Yes, the pay may not be big, but it would be enough for us to live on. And you know what? I won't justify myself any more. I loved your daughter sincerely, but today I saw with my own eyes that she doesn't need me. She cares about money, the impressions she makes on people, but not me. Relatives stood and listened to the groom's strange confessions, but they still couldn't understand what was going on. Melanie's friends were the most perplexed. Adrian had taken the girl to cafes and restaurants and given her gifts, and now what? Had he suddenly gone bankrupt? Or had he been pretending to be rich all this time? Nothing was clear. No one moved from the square near the registry office, as if they were waiting for something, but didn't know what. Adrian finally stood up and was about to leave, but suddenly a woman in a bright, colourful dress blocked his path. It was Melanie's aunt. Where are you going? Do you think you can disgrace my niece like that and just leave? If you loved her, how would you have arranged this? Look, how many guests have been invited, how much effort has been put in. The woman's voice broke into a scream. And why don't you, respectable guest, ask your beloved niece Melanie why she refused to marry a simple working guy? No benefit, so no marriage, Adrian said, noticeably getting nervous. Is it shameful that a girl wants to do better in life? And children will appear. Then she will have to sit on a penny on maternity leave. Is this calculation? This is called a reasonable approach? Did she deceive you about something? Was she pretending to be somebody? Adrian wanted to argue, but fell silent. Suddenly his mother, Caitlin, approached the bride's defender and began to speak calmly. You know, Adrian didn't want to shame his future wife. He fell in love so deeply for the first time in his life and he's not to blame for what happened. Melanie is to blame. What are you saying? Is it Melanie's fault? Of course, the mother always has a good son, and the daughter-in-law is bad. Melanie's aunt wasn't going to give up. We saw Melanie with another man at the cafe a month ago, said Caitlin, stunning Nicholas and silencing the angry woman. We were sitting with mutual friends at the cafe. Melanie didn't see us but we overheard through the partition how she was telling the young man that she really loved him and was only marrying Adrian for his money. We couldn't keep this from our son. All the guests stood in shock at what they heard. No one expected such a turn of events. Even Adrian himself was uneasy with those words. He lightly took his mother by the elbow and tried to lead her away, but Caitlin was not going to leave. Adrian didn't talk to us for a week, and then 
he said he would still marry Melanie. So we convinced him to take this step, to say that he's poor, and we couldn't even imagine that she would behave like that, fleeing from her own wedding. Isn't this evidence that she doesn't love our son? She only needs our money. Come on, Mum, let's go, said Adrian and took his mother towards the car. The guests had already started to disperse, and Melanie's father still couldn't come to his senses. How could I have raised such a daughter? The man muttered to himself and didn't understand where he was going or what he was doing. All the pleas of his loved ones that he shouldn't be upset didn't work on Nicholas. He loved Melanie very much and was already looking forward to her happy future. But everything collapsed instantly. Three months have passed since the ill-fated wedding and incredible changes have occurred in Melanie's family. Nicholas suffered a stroke that paralyzed the left side of his body. It was a shock to the family. Always active and hard-working, Melanie's father now spends almost all his time in bed. Vanessa abandoned the affairs of the store, hastily hired a new manager, and began to devote herself only to her husband's health. Melanie was finishing her final year at university and waiting for her final exams. The gloomy series of events seemed to be not going to leave the family. Sales began to decline noticeably. Regular customers of the stores, who once did not find the friendly and responsive hostess, began to come in less and less. Salaries began to decline, and two sellers had to be fired. Only Vanessa's elderly friend and a young girl of 25 remained working in the store. She also performed the role of a cleaner, but even these two women barely held on. The work schedule was not designed for two people. After his daughter's failed marriage, Nicholas abandoned all his affairs and began to give money to anyone in debt. The man seemed to want to show all acquaintances and unfamiliar people his generosity and selflessness. But in reality, as soon as the store owner was on the brink of life and death, all the debtors disappeared somewhere. Vanessa was at a loss. She had never dealt with such matters, nor did she have time for them now. She spent the last available money on her husband's rehabilitation. Several close relatives supported the family as best they could, but everyone had their own affairs and worries, and all the responsibility for caring for the sick Nicholas fell entirely on her shoulders. Melanie herself was never interested in parental affairs. Either she was busy studying at school and then at university, or there were other reasons. In fact, Nicholas and Vanessa didn't want their daughter to be involved in sales. After experiencing a difficult time in the trade industry, Melanie's parents had high hopes that their daughter would pursue a prestigious profession vastly different from their own. However, all of Melanie's plans fell apart instantly. She didn't know how to help her parents, and perhaps she didn't want to. She had no interest in taking care of her father or being involved in the family business. Melanie's close friends seemed to have vanished into thin air. She used to completely satisfy them when she was cheerful, carefree, and financially secure. What about now? She was always out of money and out of time. She began acting like a victim who had been betrayed and humiliated. Many classmates did not stop gossiping. She thinks she's depressed and a victim, but in reality, she wanted to sit on two chairs, to marry a rich guy and behind his back to have an affair with another. It didn't work out. And everyone blamed her for her father's stroke. There was no sympathy from relatives or friends. Adrian, who was supposed to beg for forgiveness, did not respond to calls or messages. Even her own mother had not spoken to her in days. At the end of June, Melanie finally received her university diploma. Upon arriving home, the girl flopped onto her bed and picked up her phone, without saying a word. Melanie, could you please go get some groceries? Her mother asked from the other room. Don't you have anything else to say to me? Melanie replied defiantly. Melanie, we haven't had milk or bread in the house for two days. 
So does that mean the bread is more important to you than your daughter's diploma? Everything was the opposite not so long ago. Her mother emerged from the room looking very pale. You know, daughter, I didn't realize what a terrible person I raised. It's painful for me to accept that you're my daughter. Wait, did you just call me a terrible person? Are you out of your mind? I graduated just now and got my diploma. So why do I get an errand to the store instead of congratulations? You're almost 23 years old, yet you still think like a child. It was a huge mistake for Dad and me to indulge you and plan your wedding. So, are you going to accuse me of being dumped by Adrian now? Yes, I'm going to accuse you, and not just of that. Her mother spoke quietly, so as not to wake her sleeping husband. Your behaviour caused your father to have a stroke, and me to have a pre-heart attack condition. You started an affair, knowing that you were going to get married soon. Mum, I've already explained everything to you. I had no relationship with that guy. We just met for business. I couldn't even imagine that Adrian's parents would be there. I'm telling you, for the thousandth time, I didn't confess my love to that guy. I don't know why Caitlin told Dad that I did, and why you believed her instead of me. The guy wrote to me on Instagram, asking if I, as a beginner designer, could advise him on choosing furniture. I naturally agreed. Experience needs to be gained, right? We met, I gave him a few tips, and he decided to thank me and invited me to our student cafe. We sat, drank coffee and talked. He started flirting with me. I told him that I was getting married soon so that he wouldn't expect anything from me. Then he started asking me all sorts of questions, like whether I could love him. I answered no and I started getting ready to go home. Then he asked me if I could pay for myself. I told him, why did you invite a girl to a cafe if you don't have any money? He started to justify himself, asking, Why is money so important to you girls? Is that the most important thing in life? I told him that, yes, money is important to me, and my fiancé is very wealthy, which is why I chose him. Why did money become your top priority? Melanie's mother asked her. Melanie, we didn't raise you in poverty. You had everything you wanted. Mum, you're being strange, Melanie replied. Money means freedom. Yes, you can't buy everything in life with it, but a good income allows me to work and live the way I want. Not like you and Daddy. You've been working from dawn till dusk in your store. If we'd been better off financially, Dad wouldn't have been so upset about the money we invested in that damn wedding. Vanessa wanted to get angry at her daughter's words, but suddenly became suspiciously calm. Your father had a stroke, not because we spent a lot of money on the wedding. He was very upset to find out what kind of two-faced and selfish daughter he had. Wow, are you accusing me again? Melanie exclaimed. At least I was honest with Adrian. He lied to me. Either he was rich or he was poor. A decent person wouldn't present themselves like that. I value myself and I don't want to marry any clowns and liars. So there's more to think about. Who's really two-faced and self-serving? Enough talk, Melanie, Vanessa said sternly. I won't pity you any more. Tomorrow morning we're going to the store and you'll work as a substitute salesperson until we make a good profit. Me, a salesperson? I don't know how to do that. Have you asked my opinion? Melanie protested. I haven't asked and I won't ask. You haven't even bothered to ask how much it costs to rehabilitate your father in these two months. How I pay the salespeople. How I manage all of this. You only think about yourself. She put her money on the table and left the room, said her mother sternly. Put the money on the table and left the room. Melanie went to the nearby grocery store and was overwhelmed with tears. She couldn't imagine being a salesperson, eating a sandwich for lunch and gossiping with other salespeople. 
She felt like the end of the world had come to her young and beautiful life, and she would have to forget about her interior design career forever. Who would hire her as a recent graduate, with C's in her diploma, for such a serious and creative job? She needed to gain experience, but she wouldn't work for free, and she wouldn't earn decent money right away. The next day, Melanie and her mother went to the store, while Aunt Polly stayed home to watch over Melanie's recovering father. The store was located at the intersection of two busy streets, which saved it from closing. Customers always appreciated the quality and variety of goods, but it was difficult to compete with the nearby shopping centre. Its generous departments sold clothes of poor quality, but they were cheaper and in great demand. Then, during the family meeting, it was decided to implement a system of discounts for regular customers and to consider other marketing tactics. Hello, Vanessa. How happy I am to see you, greeted the hostess, her friend, who worked as a salesperson in their shop. Hello, Rebecca. I bought you a new employee. Vanessa pointed at Melanie. Rebecca, I have only one request for you. Treat Melanie not as my daughter, but as an ordinary person who came here to learn everything. All right, we'll teach her everything, said Rebecca, smiling. Vanessa, while you are here, let me tell you that we sold all the old stock quickly, but the new models are less in demand. The fabric is natural wool, but the colour is grey, slightly faded. Not everyone likes it. We haven't sold a single suit this week. Everyone is asking for classic dark grey or black. You should negotiate with the supplier. Order several batches of pants and suits, since they are in demand. Melanie listened in horror to her mother's conversation with the salesperson. What sizes? What wool fabric? She was a designer herself and studied types of fabric, colour combinations, but it was one thing to work in soulless premises and meet clients as necessary, and another to try to please people every day. Melanie remembered how deeply uncomfortable she had felt when Mum or Dad had boasted in front of every customer and turned into such caring and cute people. The customers left with their purchases and were satisfied, but her parents came home and hardly spoke to each other. As a child, Melanie wondered why her parents were so tired. After all, they didn't have the hardest job in the world, and only years later, she understood that any job with people, if done conscientiously, is very exhausting. Is this what my mother wants to teach me? To please everyone? Melanie exclaimed, and did not realize how she had wandered into the men's clothing section and got lost in shirts and sweaters. Are you choosing something for your husband? A pleasant female voice came from behind her. You know... Your beloved man probably will like this cashmere sweater. It's warm, comfortable and cosy. There are all sizes and five colours to choose from. Uh, I just... Melanie couldn't figure out how to introduce herself, who she was, the hostess's daughter or a new employee. I won't bother you. Please choose. When you decide, please let me know. I'll come over, the salesperson said. How nice it is. It turns out that the salespeople in our store behave so nicely. Melanie noted to herself that the girl was gorgeous and polite. Her gloomy mood vanished like smoke, and for the first time in her life, she wanted to work as a salesperson. As funny as it sounded, Melanie left the men's shirts section and headed towards her mother with enthusiasm. Mum, what should I do? I'm ready to work. Vanessa looked like she had seen a ghost. Her always dissatisfied daughter suddenly took the initiative. Meet my daughter Melanie, but you, Rebecca, know her well. And you, Greta, have recently started working, and I haven't introduced you yet. The girls looked at each other and laughed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Greta told the owner that she had mistaken her daughter for a customer and began to offer her men's pullovers. Vanessa smiled, observing the interaction between the two girls. She knew Melanie had a difficult character, and had no illusions about her daughter's work in the store. 
but these few months she had accumulated so much fatigue that she decided to let it be. Melanie didn't expect everything to turn out this way. Boom. And she became a seller of plus-size clothes. But surprisingly, the girl felt a sudden surge of strength and energy. Melanie threw all unnecessary thoughts out of her head and started to learn sales. These are single-breasted jackets. These are double-breasted. These are Boucle's fabric jackets. They used to be insanely popular with us. Greta told Melanie about the models in the women's clothing department. What's the maximum size for these jackets? We always order tunics and dresses of certain models up to XXXL. Melanie's face showed surprise or bewilderment. Well, you know, there are different body types, different women, said Greta. Really? I didn't think plus-size clothes were popular. Well, your parents are smart people and they wouldn't deal with selling outdated things. Think about it. The sizes of fashionable dresses, blouses and skirts end at size L. But women of any weight want to look elegant and modern, and men too. We have many regular customers who don't want to lose weight, but want to dress fashionably. It's not our business why they live like that. Our task is to satisfy their needs. And you know, there are few places in our town where you can find clothes that are both high quality and fashionable in that size. Of course, there are online stores, but they have long been on our heels. But in any case, when a person comes to us, we don't just sell them something heartlessly. We learn about their desires and try to offer options. Yes, our main task is to sell. There's nothing criminal about that. But who, if not a seller, will suggest to a buyer what suits them, what to wear with it, how to combine it. Look, Greta pointed to the women's clothing section. This is a dress with a basque. It seems like just a decorative detail in the dress, but no, it's the basque that balances the proportions between a normal waist and wide hips. Or this dress. Pick a bright scarf, shoes, a bag, and it will all play out completely differently. Melanie listened with an open mouth to Greta's advice and realized that she had underestimated the work of a clothing store seller and slightly overestimated herself. Greta didn't tell her anything fundamentally new. Melanie had an idea of the cuts and correct combination of clothes. After all, in her past life, she followed fashion trends and regularly went shopping with her friends. But Greta opened up a new world to her when she talked about how to talk to the customer without violating subordination, how to please a client so they leave the store satisfied, sometimes not buying anything. I like working here, really, Greta shared with Melanie during lunch. I have a lot of respect for your mother, so I didn't leave with the other salespeople. Not every store owner would sell their jewellery to pay their employees. Yeah, my mum is a strange woman. Melanie barely managed to squeeze out the words as she thought to herself, Mum didn't say a word about selling her jewellery. Why do I find out everything from strangers? And really, I didn't even notice that Mum doesn't wear earrings or a ring. I'm a terrible daughter. I am unable to learn properly, earn money or get married. From that day on, Melanie didn't just work part-time at the family store. She started trying harder than ever. She worked with Greta for several days and Rebecca for several days. She only took one day off per week. Melanie served customers in the store, sorted and steamed clothes in the warehouse, dressed mannequins and monitored the size grid of the most popular models. But most importantly, she took on the responsibility of promoting the store on the internet which Vanessa used to do alone. Melanie didn't understand marketing or PR, but her strong desire to bring the family business back to its former level was stronger than her doubts. She began actively maintaining the store's social media page, posting photos of clothing, describing product characteristics, and answering customer questions. Vanessa saw how hard her daughter was trying how politely she communicated with customers, 
how she got into all the intricacies of working with the cash register. Despite all the sad events in their family lately, Mum was happy about this belated adulthood. Melanie no longer sent a thousand and one voice messages to her friends, no longer endlessly scrolled through the news feed, no longer snorted at every request, and spent her only day off with her father. Vanessa regretted insisting on Melanie's hasty marriage, not letting her date this guy and not getting to know his parents. Then the marriage seemed to her like the perfect solution to knock all the nonsense out of her daughter's head and turn her into a serious person. First, there would be responsibility for the family, and then, God willing, for the child. How wrong she was, thinking that someone could fix someone. No, only a person can fix himself, or circumstances. Several more months passed, and Nicholas began to gradually feel the left side of his body. Full recovery was still a long way off, but this fact was already incredible happiness in Melanie's family. The efforts of the doctors and Vanessa's care paid off. The woman was thrilled, but at the same time she realized with sadness, would Melanie have changed for the better if such trouble had not come to their home? One Monday, Melanie and Greta were working at the store. The morning was unhurried with no customers yet, the girls were picking out outfits for the mannequins and laughing. Hello, girls. An elderly woman walked into the store and smiled sweetly. Hello. The salespeople answered, almost in unison. How good that you work from nine. I've already had insomnia for a few nights. I wake up at five in the morning. I don't know what to do with myself. I've decided to go for a walk. Find what I need and calm down. What would make you feel better? A blouse, a dress, or a warm cardigan? Greta approached the customer and stopped not far from the woman. You know, I have a problem. I need to pick out a dress for a wedding. The size is XXL. I already looked for a dress yesterday here next to you. The woman nodded her head towards the neighboring shopping center. But they offered me all dark colors. Please tell me, what kind of dress styles do you usually wear? What would you like to show off and what to cover up? The elderly woman laughed. Oh, girls, at your age, you need to open everything. You're young and slim, but at my age, it's better to cover up. I want something light and pleasant. After all, my only grandson is getting married. If you find a dress with a light wrap, I will be happy. The saleswoman showed the elderly woman all the fancy dresses in the store in her size. The shopper looked at everything they offered her with great interest. Understanding that the process would be long, Melanie decided to have an easy conversation with her. So, your wedding is coming up soon, and is the bride pretty? No, still three weeks until the celebration, but I like everything to be ready in advance. My grandson's name is Adrian. As for the bride, I haven't seen her yet. I just arrived three days ago. I live far from here. My son brought me a plane ticket. He said, Mum, you'll celebrate your grandson's wedding and stay with us for a month. So I came. The woman tried on all the dresses but couldn't decide which one suited her best. Girls, I've already tortured you enough. I'm sorry. But I haven't bought anything for myself in so long. There's not much occasion to dress up in old age. My son told me that the wedding will be at the highest level. The bride is from a very wealthy family. We're not rushing you at all, Melanie smiled. It's good that the bride is well off. There will be fewer problems in married life. Oh dear, money is not always a guarantee of a happy marriage. Take my son, for example. He used to be a calm and reasonable person, but now I don't understand what's happening to him. He became nervous and agitated. His wife squeezes everything out of him for a luxurious life. Caitlin loves to go to the most expensive resorts and wear expensive clothes. But one thing is good. My grandson is a decent guy. He helps his father in business and does what he can. Melanie's eyes blurred. It can't be a coincidence. I'll take this one. 
The pink colour refreshes well, and the fabric is pleasant to the touch, decided the elderly woman, looking satisfied in the mirror. Melanie felt as a pounding ache overwhelmed her, and the elderly woman looked at her suspiciously and asked, Are you feeling okay? Melanie couldn't hide her tears and quietly sobbed, I'm sorry, just tired. Don't cry, dear. You'll have your own celebration in life and you'll get married, the woman comforted. You know I was supposed to have a wedding, but it fell through because of me, Melanie continued to sob. The woman took Melanie's hand and said softly, Don't cry. Let's process my purchase now, and we'll go outside and you can tell me everything. Ten minutes later, Melanie was already telling Adrian's grandmother about everything that unfortunate day. Then she talked about her father's stroke, how her mother was devoting all her strength to taking care of her husband, and how she was working as a saleswoman in a store to help her parents. My dear, to say that I'm shocked is an understatement, Mrs. Sullivan said. I'm very sorry about your father, but tell me honestly, did you really cheat on Adrian? No, of course not, Melanie's voice sounded desperate. I'm telling you all this not because I want to get Adrian back, it's too late. He's getting married. I'm just upset that I was slandered in front of all my relatives, friends and my father who couldn't bear such shame. My parents always thought of me as not serious, and I couldn't convince them that I didn't confess my love to a stranger. It was just some idiotic coincidence. I agreed to go out with the person who needed my designer advice. I didn't see anything wrong with that. Why would I go to the most popular cafe in our city if I were a cheater, just before the wedding? What's it called? Mrs. Sullivan asked. It's just called pizza. It opened a year ago, serves delicious food, and the prices are reasonable. We call it the student cafe. There are always plenty of students there. Melanie, do you still love Adrian? Mrs. Sullivan unexpectedly changed the subject. I think I love, although I'm giving the word a slightly different meaning right now. I know you'll ask me why I ran away from the wedding if I loved him. You see, I was preparing myself for a happy married life with the man I loved. I liked, I won't lie, that Adrian was a wealthy guy. I thought that if I married him, I would become financially independent of my parents and live as I pleased. Before my father's incident, we had no problems with money, but my mum and dad constantly talked about how I would have to work hard in the future to become a real professional and live without worries. Now I understand that my parents were right about everything, but back then, I just imagined that half of my life would be spent on achieving that, while there were so many other interesting and new things around me. Your grandson came to the wedding like a jester, saying that he was completely broke and that we would live on his salary as a taxi driver. I just didn't expect such a turn of events. I had told everything about my smart, beautiful and well-off fiancé, and then this happened. I understand that in your eyes I am a foolish, selfish person who wanted to settle better in life. Let it be that way. But I'm just too tired. How many thoughts are running through your head, Melanie? But believe me, the most important thing is that you realised your problem. We all make mistakes. My son, Brandon, a successful entrepreneur, a self-sufficient man, but he's under his wife's thumb and he didn't say a word to me about this story. But you know, Melanie, our conversation with you is not over yet. Let's meet tomorrow morning. I think my legs led me to your store for a reason, she said to Melanie. Melanie said goodbye to Adrian's grandmother and went back to work. A feeling of unprecedented relief filled her soul. Suddenly, someone called her by name. A handsome stranger pulled up too close to the sidewalk in his car and gestured for Melanie to sit in the front seat. The girl ignored him and went on her way. The stranger jumped out of the car and ran up to Melanie. Hey, Melanie, do you remember me? H Hello, no, I don't remember you. What do you want? Wow, calm down. Why so gloomy in the morning? I just came to talk to you. 
I'm one of Adrian's friends. My name is Marcus. I was late for your wedding. Adrian told me everything that had happened. I have been writing to you on social media, but you don't respond. So I had to catch you on the street. Do you know that Adrian is getting married soon? I'm happy for him, Melanie answered indifferently. But he doesn't love his fiance. His mother is forcing him to marry this girl. Things aren't going well for his father in business, and Crystal is the daughter of a big shot in our administration. He seemed to like her at first, so she's a pretty girl, but he talked to her for a while and realized they didn't have any common ground. He isn't glad he agreed to this wedding himself. Well, there's nothing I can do to help. Let him put on the same show with her as she did with me, and maybe she'll get off him on her own. Melanie, I'm serious. You have to tell Adrian that you still love him, and there will be no wedding. He's setting a trap for himself, and I just want to save him. Marcus, why do you think I still love him, and should save him from such a good, advantageous match? And do you think I'll believe both of you, especially Adrian, who played a prank at our wedding? This is not a joke, Melanie. Goodbye. The girl turned around and went towards the store. Melanie! Melanie! Marcus shouted after her. Do you even know how much Adrian is suffering because of what happened? He's proud. He just can't call you himself. He knows he's to blame. A man is the master of his own destiny. Melanie loudly pronounced the first phrase that came to her mind and walked even faster. Caitlin, dear, make me some tea, please. I feel like drinking something. Mrs. Sullivan sat in the spacious kitchen, spreading butter on a piece of bread. Of course I will. But it's just wonderful. You do everything yourself, and now you're asking me to do it. Caitlin, you know I wanted someone to take care of me, like in a cafe. I only go to such places rarely. There is no such variety of places in my small town. So what's stopping you from going to a cafe or restaurant? Brandon and I often go to such places. Yes, you're probably right. There's a woman living in the house across from you who recommended going to a cafe. What's it called? Oh, I remember. Just pizza. She said it's tasty and cheap. Do you think it's worth going there? I'm shocked by such advice. It's a youth cafe. There's constant noise and the staff is rude. No, definitely not. Have you been there, Caitlin? I've been there once. Thanks for the advice, dear. But now I'm going for a walk. Mum, where are you going? Asked Brandon as he saw his mother leaving. Yes, Sonny, I am. Could you please drive me? It's nearby, she replied. Under his wife's watchful eye, Brandon and his mother left the apartment. Mom, I'm starving. I was planning to have some lunch at home, said Brandon, clearly nervous. Don't worry, son. You'll eat in ten minutes. I came up with an excuse to talk to you face to face for once. Let's sit on that bench over there. I know what this is, Mom. As a former senior investigator, you're going to interrogate me. I used to joke about that, but now it's true. The future of your only son and my only grandchild depends on it. So, tell me, why did you ruin Adrian and Melanie's wedding? What are you talking about, Mum? You know that Melanie refused to marry Adrian when he told her that he was poor and worked as a taxi driver, replied Brandon, exasperated. But that's not all. She was also flirting with a stranger behind Adrian's back before the wedding. We saw and heard everything. And why did you and Caitlin, the regulars in expensive restaurants, decide to go to such a cheap youth cafe? Caitlin called me. I was really surprised to go to such a place, but I didn't say anything. And what a coincidence. You were lucky enough to find two free tables in a crowded cafe. Yes, Mum. We saved our son from that lying girl, and now he's marrying a good girl from a decent and well-off family. I will be pleased to be related to her father. Brandon, why are you so worried and stressed all the time? Your mother is still alive and your son is marrying a good girl. Yet you're on pins and needles. Tell me the truth. Well, if you want to know the truth, then here it is. 
I invested a large sum of money into a business and lost it. We barely have enough money to cover the debts, and the wedding is ahead. Everything is difficult. Why did you give your son an expensive wedding in this difficult time and put yourself in even greater debt? Wouldn't Adrian have understood your situation? No, Mum. Caitlin believes that if we have a grand wedding, then Nicholas, Crystal's father, will treat us better in the future. You know what, my dear? Don't ruin your own life or your child's life. It won't end well. It's better to cure your addiction to Caitlin, who plays you like a puppet. By the way, I accidentally met Melanie yesterday. She works as a salesperson at her parents' store. I can see through people, and I can assure you that she's an honest girl who just got a little confused. Well, Mum, I don't even want to listen. Brandon was already about to leave. Wait! She explained to me why she reacted like that and ran away. You know, if your father had surprised me like that, I would have at least hit him with a frying pan. Beside, Melanie's father just started recovering from the stroke he got after your mess. If you're saving your money, make it a prenuptial agreement instead of a circus. I heard that Melanie's father is in a bad condition, and I am very sorry for that. But Adrian offered him money for expenses and he refused. We decided that it would be a good lesson for our son to find out who is with you because of money and who is with you because of love. Maybe you shouldn't do such a test for your Caitlin. Yesterday, I saw a check that fell out of her purse. She bought herself another leather coat. So now I understand why you have problems with money. I could live off that amount for half a year. Mum, let's end this conversation. Stop accusing us. Adrian's wedding will still take place. He's busy preparing for the celebration. Yes, I see. He's preparing so much that he's become pale in front of his laptop. He doesn't even have time to eat. Mum, he's an IT specialist. That's why he doesn't leave his computer. Okay, do what you know. Go eat. We'll talk tonight. When Brandon left, Mrs. Sullivan called a taxi and went straight to the store to meet Melanie. She told the girl about her suspicions and convinced her to meet again with the guy to whom, according to Caitlin, she confessed her love. Melanie refused at first, but Adrian's grandmother convinced her that this meeting would help her uncover a serious moral crime and the future of Mrs. Sullivan's family and maybe Melanie's future depends on whether this guy agrees to meet. Although Mrs. Sullivan's ideas seemed partly absurd to Melanie, after an hour of conversation with the charming investigator, her doubts disappeared on their own. After receiving a call from Melanie reporting that the meeting with the necessary man was scheduled, Mrs. Sullivan gathered Brandon, Caitlin and Adrian in the living room. My dear ones, tomorrow marks exactly 45 years since I started working in the police. That's why I want to invite you to the restaurant and celebrate it. At the appointed hour, the whole family was already seated at a cosy cafe table, enjoying various delicacies. There weren't many people in the restaurant. The conversation at the table flowed like a river. Mrs. Sullivan told Adrian about what his father Brandon was like as a child, what he liked, and what he was fond of in his spare time. Of course, some stories about her work as an investigator in her native town were also told by the elderly woman. After consuming several alcoholic drinks, Caitlin suddenly asked her mother-in-law, Tell me, where did you get the money for this restaurant? It's a very exquisite and expensive place. Don't be offended, I'm just curious. Mrs. Sullivan responded with dignity, not at all embarrassed like her son and grandson. Don't worry, Caitlin, dear. We're spending my hard-earned money. I have a good pension, and thanks to my son's regular help, I have saved a decent sum in the bank. This money will be enough for Brandon to pay off his debt, and for Adrian not to marry a girl he doesn't love, whom you picked out for him. Adrian almost choked on his cocktail when he heard those words. 
He had only shared his doubts about marriage with his close friend. But how could his grandmother know all this? Brandon was stunned by his mother's candor and didn't know what to say. Caitlin was breathing heavily and was about to start a verbal battle. I've been living on this earth for years, and I immediately realized that someone was putting pressure on my son and Adrian. Some people like to solve their problems at the expense of others, but that's not your option, grandson. I'm sure you're an honest person, but you're influenced by your mother, who doesn't deny herself the purchase of a 25th Himalayan goat fur coat at a time when there are problems in the family. How dare you speak to me like that? Caitlin stood up and threw her crumpled napkin on the table. Sit down and calm down. Melanie, come here. To everyone's surprise, Melanie and an unknown man appeared. I invited guests to our wonderful celebration, continued Mrs. Sullivan, a celebration of truth, honesty and justice. Caitlin, don't you want to tell us how you arranged the meeting between this young man and Melanie, how you booked two tables and how you took Brandon here? Caitlin was looking at her mother-in-law and the young man seemingly ready to take a desperate step. Adrian stared at Melanie intently, feeling overwhelmed with shame. How could he have believed his mother's words and become involved in this shameful adventure? Unexpectedly, the unknown young man spoke up first. I'm very sorry this happened, the guy said, looking at Adrian and Brandon with sad eyes. I just needed money, and then Caitlin suggested earning some extra cash by provoking emotions and extra words from Melanie. I would never have come here and kept this a secret if Melanie hadn't said that her father had a stroke after the shock at the wedding. Forgive me, the guy lowered his eyes to the floor and left the cafe. Melanie stood and silently cried behind Mrs. Sullivan's back. But why? Brandon's loud voice broke the long silence. Why did you lie to everyone, Caitlin? Why did you convince everyone that our son's bride was a traitor? And when Adrian didn't believe it, you suggested such a nasty way of testing. How could I have signed up for all this nonsense? I don't want to see you any more. Wait, don't jump to conclusions, Melanie exclaimed, rushing to the table as if struck by lightning. Don't argue because of me. I'm not worthy of such sacrifice. Adrian, I'm sorry I didn't appreciate you as I should have. I just didn't expect such a test on my own wedding day. The girl wiped away her tears and headed for the exit. Adrian immediately jumped out of the table and ran after her. Forgive me, Melanie, for my father, for falling for my mother's words about you like a fool. Let's go talk. Melanie and Adrian left the cafe, leaving Brandon, his mother and Caitlin sitting at the table in silence. According to the genre's laws, I was supposed to buy plane tickets and leave immediately. However, since I live far away, please bear with me for a couple more weeks. I swear that I don't want to be the cause of your family's breakdown. You may hate me and curse me however you want, it's your right, but please understand feelings and people's destinies aren't a joke. And I'm not just talking about Melanie and Adrian. What about that girl, Crystal, who believes she is loved and will be made happy? Brandon, I didn't want to tell you, but maybe the time has come. I loved your father very much, but he didn't love me back. Not because I was bad or he was bad. It was for an entirely different reason. Our parents didn't allow him to marry the girl he was deeply in love with, and to spite them, he hastily married me. I was the happiest person on earth when I got married. I rejoiced, dreamed, eagerly anticipated when you would be born. Your father physically lived with me, but until his death, he thought of that girl. You can't imagine how painful it is to feel all your life that you're not the one and only, but just a good mother and wife. That's why I often stayed at work, tried to forget, received diplomas, titles, but couldn't get the most important thing, reciprocated love.
So please forgive me, son, if I couldn't give you enough motherly love. Mrs. Sullivan tightly squeezed her son's hand and sighed heavily. Mum, why have you told me all this now? There was no reason then, and now the time has come. I'm sorry, I've completely lost control of myself, exclaimed Caitlin, and tears flowed down her cheeks. Everything will be fine. Mrs. Sullivan took Brandon and Caitlin's hands and joined them together. The waiter approached the table and was about to ask for the bill when a tall figure of Adrian appeared from behind him. I have two pieces of news for you. Dear parents, Grandma, pardon, the senior investigator for heart cases. Let me start with the good one. My carefully chosen bride, Crystal, is leaving to study in London. As a result, the wedding is cancelled, by the way, according to her wish. The second news is even better. Melanie and I want to get married again. This time, for sure. I clarify precisely get married, not have an outrageously expensive wedding. Who's in favour? Raise your hand. Brandon, Caitlin and the grandmother raised both hands without a word and laughed out loud. Finally, there was complete mutual understanding in their homes.